Hello Traveler, welcome back. In this video I want to kind of showcase the behind the scenes elements and techniques that I took upon myself to create the latest video that I released, which is the Beauty in Motion No Man's Sky time lapse video. I've been wanting to make some sort of montage of time lapses for a very long time ever since the beginning, really. And I can never really find unique ways to capture time lapses, and in enough ways to capture them, to really create something special. I accidentally ran into some of these techniques and I thought it'd be really cool to share with you guys so that maybe you can incorporate this into your own video. First, I want to give a tremendous shout out to all the other No Man's Sky YouTubers content creators that have been creating time lapses within the game. It's really been inspiring me to push this project forward. Now it's important to say because I get a lot of questions about, um, you know, it looks like you're in photo mode but things are still moving. How do you do that? It's one out of two mods that I use and I only use these two mods to, to capture anything. One of them uh, gets rid of the bounding sphere in photo mode so I can kind of go wherever I want. A huge thanks to Rayrod for providing me a very specific uh, mod just for the Bounding Sphere. A good example of that is the pullback from the orb off the planet. Uh, the other mod that I use is something called Cockpit Cloak, and this was created by GMR Leon, and you can find uh, this mod on the No Man's Sky mod. Uh, website and on the Nexus Mods website, which I'll provide links for in the description. But these are two mods that I basically never turn off. I try to stay away from the cosmetic mods because that's not really what I'm after. I want mods that I can use as tools to capture cinematic moments within the game, and that's, that's what I've been trying to do since the very beginning, because I want to show the game as it is. So I'm going to jump in here into the game and I'm going to kind of show you some examples of what I do. This is my base, uh, Frozen Planet. Frozen Planets are my absolute favorite. You'll see the cockpit cloak kind of kick in here once I jump into the ship. There's no ship. You don't, you don't ever see it. All you see is the HUD. What I can do and what I usually do is I go into the general options and turn off the HUD. So now you don't have anything on your screen other than maybe some uh, velocity streaks or whatever. So you get some of that kind of on the sides, but that's okay, right? That's fine. But this really opens up a huge variety of ways to capture planets, capture space, capture other ships flying by. So the very first shot that opened in the time-lapse video, I utilized this. Just like really, really simple, slow movements like this just kind of add an extra layer of just quality. Something smooth and fluid, you know. So the star rising, the star setting, you can capture all of that and to double check where the star is going on a planet, I usually go into photo mode and check the time of day. So you'll see it's 2200 here. I'm going to change it and move it forward to when the star rises. And it looks like it's kind of, yeah, kind of curving that way we can look towards where the star is coming from. So it's coming from my right. So I want to sort of line up that shot. And uh, it's hard to know exactly where your center is. So what I do, let's see, let's go into photo mode here. Pull up the HUD. And if you leave your HUD alone, your crosshairs come up in the middle. That's just by default. So what I do is I take a, a dry erase marker, make sure it's dry erase, and I just draw in little dot where that center is and that will give me a good indication as to where my ship is going so now it's there it's going to stay there my HUD is completely off but I still have that to kind of direct uh, my view and direct where the ship is going so this works on getting some really cool smooth shots forward you can even reverse the video to make it look like the star is rising which is what I had to do with one of the shots. We can find a spot that really suits kind of the direction that I want to be looking at. Let's say kind of something up like that. So it's facing upwards just a little bit. 
kind of even with the horizon, right? We can double check where the star is going uh, from there. But of course, there is no mod that can take out that slight shifting when you're standing idle. It's really annoying. So if you're ever planet side and you want to get the star rising or setting, or just kind of the atmosphere of the planet, you can use this mod and then just sit in your ship. You have no HUD to worry about, and all you need to do is worry about where your camera's facing. So I have rubber bands that I have connected to my controller that I can hold one of the sticks into a certain position. So let's say we want to get more of the sky in there. We can, we can put a rubber band on the controller and just kind of leave it. I actually got this tip from a few other YouTubers who were doing their own time-lapse videos and how this helped them create a smooth movement with the camera and the character uh, in order to capture something smooth. The only drawback is there's no dynamic movements. And for the most part, I think that's okay because at the start of my video, uh, I didn't want too much happening. Plus, uh, in post, you can, you can do a slight push-in and a slight pull-out Using the 235 aspect ratio uh, helps a lot because I'm recording all the video in 16.9, which is much taller than 235, uh, so that I, I have more to work with on top and bottom, so I can move the image uh, depending on you know what's happening in the shot. I can move the image up or down to, to still kind of give it some movement and some something interesting to look at. Now for those time-lapse shots that I got with the orb, it was a little different. I actually went into photo mode and had to manually change the time of day. So the orb was moving at regular speed while everything else was being uh, sped up. And what I ended up doing there was going into photo mode. Then you can set up your field of view, depth of field, and you can definitely get rid of that vignette. And from here, I can crop where the UI starts so that we don't see any of that, and I can still capture something over here. It's a, it's a large enough space to still use in post. So what I do is I take my uh, dry erase marker again, and I go in here, and I use a ruler because you know it, it helps better. And uh, I create, a, I put a line right there where the UI is. Let's see, let's get rid of the UI. You can see. Okay, this is what I'm working with. The UI would end up right here and down here, and this is the frame that I'm working with uh, as far as what I'm capturing. I'll just increase the field of view so we can capture more in the frame. There, you don't want to go too far because the edge of the screen over here becomes more distorted than the middle of the screen, uh, so it becomes a little more obvious. I think I'm going to stick with that, honestly. You go to the time of day and you just let that thing fly. And so now what we're capturing is this really quick time lapse in this part of the screen. And what we can do is later on go into post uh, and crop out and move and uh, do exactly what we want to do with it. But the same thing applies for when I'm in space. Now the trick here is the time of day is not in the UI. But if you still use Q and E, which is the shortcut uh, to move things uh, forward or backward, you can change the time of day in space. What's even cooler is I can change the position of the star and still be able to affect the time of day. And we all make sure your cursor is out of the frame. And so now what we're capturing is much less than what this line is, uh, the UI that was on the planet. What we're looking at now is the UI in space. And you have, and you can see, there's just so much more to work with. So you can see where using the aspect ratio 235 really comes in handy because I'm only worrying about this little strip of video. So I'll kind of extend this part out a little more using the marker. So you can see the star 
almost, almost, almost horizontal. Yeah. It'll probably come up a little up in the corner and then kind of stream down a bit. So super useful uh, to go to 235, not just because of the cinematic look, but also the cropping and the movement that I can do within the video clip itself and not lose too much quality. Some of these shots, like this one, was recorded way before Atlas Rises, and there were mods that could actually get rid of the idle moving when you were standing still, so that became useful for some of these time lapses. So this is another shot that I'm talking about, going from left to right as the uh, star moves across. If we take the black mat off, you can see all the UI right there. All right, so here's a shot I'm pretty sure a lot of people are confused about. Uh, because if you, if you go to your freighter, and if you get this close uh, to the windows, you're not going to be able to see through them. So this shot is impossible to do out here. So what I ended up doing was going into the freighter and using a glitch that Syrian had pointed out some time ago, a long time ago, in the Atlas Rises update, that if you go into the center landing pad into the back of the freighter, you can jetpack right above this red light here and glitch through the system, glitch through the, uh, the ship. And then from here, I went into photo mode and I was able to exit the ship in photo mode. So now you kind of get like the inside bare bones of what you're seeing. Again, using that method of blocking out for where the UI is and then just changing the time of day and space. Crazy, right? And so once we're done here, we can just kind of erase this uh, marker. It's super easy. I don't suggest you leave the marks on there for very long. <laughs> yeah, so that's pretty much all the techniques I used to create that video. Uh, I hope you found it interesting. Again, if you do anything like this in the future, show it to me. Like, I really want to see what you do with these tools. And until next time, stay safe, travelers. So this is a good look at some of the projects that I'm working on right now. A little sneak peek. The next No Man's Sky cinematic video is going to be featuring the Atlas. It's going to be dark. It's going to be ominous. It's going to be mysterious. It's going to be lonely. I already have a really good song in mind for this video, so it's just a matter of capturing the footage and putting it together. And then, of course, there's some other projects that might be more long-term.